Hi, this is Peter Detmer, Madison College, Program Director for the Robotics and Automation Program. Today I'm going to show you how to add faceplates and uh, make them functional for PowerFlex 40 drive in Studio 5000 and Vector View Studio. Uh, first of all, you have to find the faceplate documentation and necessary files on the Rockwell's sample code website. After you find them, you get this folder, you extract it, and within this folder, you will find terms and conditions. You're going to find all the reference files as well as documentation on how to implement this on your system. These are generic instructions, uh, not designed for this PowerFlex 40 demonstration that I'm doing, but you will uh, be able to reference it to uh, follow through and complete this assignment. So to get started, uh, in Studio 5000 or Logix Designer, I added a processor and just an Ethernet card. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new module, which is going to be our PowerFlex drive. So if you look for this PowerFlex, we can just type it in. Uh, down here we have various models. We have the 40E, which is the uh, AC drive that has a 22COM E uh, network communication cards added to it. I'm going to create this. Then uh, if you give it a name, I'm just going to call it PowerFlex 1. You have to give it an IP address. and verify the revision match what you have installed. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the drive uh, setup. So this is really a add-on profile because it gives these tags intelligent meanings. Meaning if you go into the PowerFlex, you'll see not base tags of bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You actually see start, stop, clear faults and other commands within the base tags that you can use directly or create your alias tags. Uh, next step is that uh, within the add-on instructions, uh, we have to import what came with the downloaded folder. And uh, right-click, add-on instruction, and we don't want to do a new one. We want to right-click and say import, because it does come pre-configured from Rockwell's uh, download center. So I have mine on my local drive. File management is pretty critical here. And uh, again, you have to double click multiple times to get down deep into these files. Uh, we want to go to the faceplate files and we're looking for the AOI for our PowerFlex 40 and the file extension is L5X. Uh, we're going to open this file. We're going to import it. And within the import, you get options of what should be done. Uh, here you can, uh, if you make changes to an add-on instruction or update it, you can modify add, and, but for our um, setup, it's simple. We just do an all new to create these tags and logic that come predefined from Rockwell Automation. So let's take a quick look what we actually imported. So under the add-on instruction logic side, you'll see there are all these instructions and they are then used later on to uh, make your PowerFlex controllable through the faceplate on the HMI. And uh, there are a couple of things missing. So if you go into parameters and local tags, you have to find the input PowerFlex 40 reference. You have to change the data type and point it to the uh, AB PowerFlex input zero. So yeah, this is the drive we configured earlier and this is a data type that needs to be attached to the input um, tag. Uh, there's also a tag that we have to change for the out PowerFlex 40. So click the dot, dot, dot and then use this uh, output colon one. Sometimes you just have to try multiple ones. We know that this output colon one is the one that we need. Um, now that we added these, if you do a verify, uh, we shouldn't get any errors. Uh, in the main logic, we're going to import, add on the PowerFlex instruction. So all we do is we drag it in here. First thing we have to do is uh, create a tag name here. The example that comes to the documentation refers to it as motor underscore one. So we're going to keep it the same. I'm going to right click and create the tag. 
and we have to make sure it's a data type that references the PowerFlex AOI. Uh, also make sure it's in the scope for the processor and then we create this. We still have to add the input PowerFlex 40 references. If you did this earlier in the program tags for the add-on instructions, these should be the only ones available on the output side. And then the uh, speed reference, uh, we make that 600 and we make five rows visible. These parameters may have to be modified based on other logic you're using or the way your system is configured. So this is pretty much it for the logic side. So I'm going to save this project. Uh, now I did uh, a basic project in Factory Talk View Studio. Here I'm going to have to have a uh, um, main screen and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a go to button here. Before I do that, I go into displays, right click and say add component into application. So these are predefined displays that come with the downloaded information. You say OK. It's going to migrate the data. Uh, this might be an older version than what you're currently running. And here's your display. Just so just to show you, this is what this display looks like that we imported. Looks like a big mess. Do not move or change anything on here. These are different layers that get turned on based on which uh, function is enabled. And uh, so again, on the main display, we just add a go to display button. And uh, I'm going to label it PowerFlex. Um, we're going to open up this PowerFlex faceplate. And we're going to come back and add this parameter file in just a little bit. Uh, for the parameter file, before we go to that, we have to set up our communications. And this is a brand new project, so I have nothing defined here. Uh, so you might get this pop up. We're going to add a shortcut, just call it uh, CLX. This can be anything. Then you browse through your uh, network, your configured files, and you want to browse to a processor. So I don't have anything physically connected right now, so I can't browse to that. But uh, this is something that you simply add here. And then once you have a processor selected, you click apply, you do copy from design to runtime. And uh, then this shortcut for RSTINGS Enterprise Communications is configured. I'm going to click OK here. And I'm going to go to my parameters, right click again, add component into application. And uh, it remembers the folder I was in earlier. That's why it populates this right away. Uh, this is the ME PowerFlex parameter file. And these are a bit difficult to interpret. Uh, so I'm going to click the plus sign, double click the parameter file. And this is really just a text file. Uh, do not try to edit this outside somewhere. There's some hidden parameters in the background. There are some examples here. Uh, what's in the square brackets should be the shortcut name you gave the uh, RSTINGS Enterprise that you configured that's pointing to your processor. Uh, this motor one is a tag name that you assigned to this PowerFlex AOI. So this is where if you have multiple motors, uh, you can just create a new one and uh, call it motor two. And then you would add an additional item here with the same shortcut of motor two. Uh, let's save this. Go back to our main display. Uh, go to the properties and then point it to the parameters file that we just created. Uh, apply this and say OK and make sure you save it. So the next steps are that uh, you have to uh, transfer this file into your processor. You have to create a runtime file here. And once you configure the runtime file, you use the transfer utility to transfer it into your HMI. If you've done everything correctly, uh, it will run. And uh, when you click this button, it's going to pop up this faceplate design as a pop-up on top of your main display. And only the functions that you want to see that are enabled will show up and uh, um, function as you would expect it to.
um, that's it and uh, make sure you double check all your spelling and uh, this is critical in the parameter file don't add any spaces or dashes that aren't there make sure that uh, your versions are correct for the powerflex drive and uh, that you have the correct version for your mer file that you create to transfer over to your hmi all right, thanks again. This is again Peter Detmer at Madison College and uh, good luck.